everyone welcome to vistas learning we learning provides quality education and that's for all the students we teachers over here the quality of education what you want to know from the chapters from poem from exercise maths social science science english we are all here to solve your problem according to the syllabus of karnataka board now we have also come with different languages you can also see the upcoming videos with different languages too you know my name rajni and i am your social science mentor and today we will discuss more about what south america land of andes why we call land of andes because of that andes mountain which are taking most of the places in south america and covering the uh, land with a huge mass of mountains all over south america and with that help you get rainfall rivers lakes everything is possible over there so that's what i am here to teach you <coughs> about south america basically what we know that south america we did two previous classes it was it was based on some different kinds of topics all the topics i have divided into the chapters see according to the chapter i have divided it into three parts so this is our last part we will be knowing about more something and very important about south america land of andes today we will cover natural vegetation so basically what is natural vegetation natural vegetation vegetation what we eat what we grow what is been eaten by that particular region where we stay everything can't be available in every places only because of transportation one person can get those uh, veggies and fruits where they are coming from take an example of apple it's grown in kashmir why because of the cool region and that apple is supplied whole to the country so same as natural vegetation what is the main and basic uh, fruits and vegetables found in that particular region so basically what happens the equatorial region of the amazon basin has dense tropical rainforest so basically we see in the equatorial because i said you the equator line crosses from that where south america land of andes and upper side is tropic of capricorn and tropic of cancer accordingly okay so equator passes through that equator we get lots of humidity and because of that humidity lots of rainfall it is the world's largest rainfall locally called selvasa so that rainforest is called selvasa why because of the equatorial region and so we see equator uh, equators in that region huge rainfall occurs huge rainfall so huge amounts of trees also comes so this is the region where the rainfall occurs and we call it selvasa mahagani and ebony sorry mahagani uh, gani and ebony are the valuable trees in this area the rubber trees found here are used for plastics so we know that we get rubber those eraser would be used for erasing those where we get from we get from this tree this is called rubber tree basically what things are made from rubber plastic we get from this and that substance what we get from that tree is called lactic this is a very important plant which we see white milk coming out from there so basically we also see when we break uh, mango tree leaves once you break it you will find white color milk coming out from there so that is another fluid that is another substance and this lactic is something different what you don't know but from there we can make rubber so this plant this tree is found in this region okay on the either side of the equatorial forest grasslands are found so what do you mean by this equatorial region are also uh, they we also see grasslands in those areas these are known as 
Lenos on the uh, Orinoco River Basin. Okay, there is an Orinoco River Basin which is in Venezuela. Uh, and as Campos in the Brazilian highlands, the southeastern coast of Brazil has tropical deciduous forest. The you can say Ghana jungle. Ghana jungle. Why? Because of the equatorial region, lots of rainfall. And we see huge forest, deciduous forest, Ghana jungle. Where you go, you will be lost in that region. So you have to make it prepare yourself for going in that region so that you can identify those locations, those areas and people staying nearby that forest and all. South America land of grassland. We also call land of grass because we have also seen the grasslands are present in this area. I taught you in your previous class, remember, isn't it? So Lenos of Venezuela, Campos of Brazil, Pampas of Argentina. So these grasslands, what are they? These are some kinds of grasses which are found in this locality, which is Venezuela, Brazil and Argentina. So these three localities have different kinds of grassland present in those area. Okay, so first is Lenos. So these kinds of uh, grass are found in those places. South of Green Chaco region, Argentina and Uruguay is covered with temperate grassland to a large extent known as Pampas. This is the temperate grassland you will find in this area. Pampas, this is a very lovely grass. Okay, it's a kind of grass. And these sweet little, you can see petals, small, small, it's a kind of flower. Once you blow it, the thing will go and fly in the air. I think you have seen these kinds of grass uh, nearby your area. So what happened in that region when that season comes, it blooms. But when the season goes, it just go and uh, all the plant dies in that season. Okay, So that is a very specific season when they grow. So this is a place in Argentina where you see these kinds of pampas growing in that region. The plateau of Patagonia has temperate desert having scrubs, vegetation on the western side of the Andes and the central region has mixed types of forest. So this is a plateau you will find in this. This is a uh, location in South America where you will find temperature like desert. Okay, so desert kind of temperature is there. Uh, what kind of temperature we see in desert? We'll see over here also. Even though it has water, but due to the less rainfall and due to lots of heat, the plant doesn't grow over there. A bit kind of grass grows over there, but not at all plants are being seen in these places. Okay. And central region has mixed type of forest. So central region has a mixed type of forest. Somewhere it is grass. Somewhere it is like desert. Somewhere it is rukha sukha ghas, you say. And some places have little forest. So in mixture of this, we see these kinds of places in this area. Temperature deciduous forests are found on the lower slopes. Okay. Coniferous forests are found on the higher slopes. Now, what do you understand by this? Now, the lower slopes, which are on the uh, above the sea level, the mid one. Okay, more of the sea level you will find. So over here in the middle of this area, just little above the sea level, you will find deciduous forest. Okay, and above that you will find coniferous forest. Those forests are in this shape. All the trees over here are of this shape. You go for Christmas tree, isn't it? So that Christmas tree is also in this shape. Okay, so this is known as coniferous forest. Okay. Central Chile has the Mediterranean type of climate which has evergreen trees and shrubs. Now, Central Chile, the place I said you about it, Central Chile where lots of vegetations are done, people stays over there. So, over there in Mediterranean type, climate changes means over there the climate changes and when the climate changes, you will find evergreen trees, evergreen shrubs, grasses all over around. Due to what? Due to rainfall. Wildlife 
now we'll come we have seen about the natural vegetation now we'll see something about the wildlife also because being in the forest you will also see many animals living over there in that region so it's a very peculiar type of animals living in that region i'll show you those pictures you will be shocked by seeing those pictures south america has a variety of animals birds and reptiles we all know okay because of the amazon jungle and amazon river lots of huge species of animals can be found in this area the condor is the biggest bird of prey in the world condor it looked like vulture you have seen vulture eagle so it's like that its feather is really huge and you can see what is written over there condor is the biggest bird of prey it hunts its food it doesn't eat grass it hunts its food in the world rhea is a large bird which cannot fly like the ostrich in australia so rhea is also a kind of bird which is which looks like a bird but it doesn't have wings and it doesn't can fly because of the weight like ostrich has heavy weight small wings it cannot fly the so same as but ostrich are really very dangerous you see those ostrich it's more than uh tallest than the human being also so think that ostrich is tall but still it is not the biggest bird in the world so think about condor that condor is the biggest bird means it's a huge so you can just uh, think about its size it weights and flying all over the sky hunting its food so this is condor it looks like a vulture but it is not a vulture it has a collar kind of neck white color neck and it look, it looks really pretty the feathers look really big pretty but the beaks you see the sharp beaks one catches enough for the animal which are which is there in their mouth to finish off their life so that is really important that why are they called the hunting birds bird of prey so uh clear about it you have seen this anim uh, bird nearby you i know you are not in south america so you have not seen this play but that is why i'm showing you this so that you can have an estimate in your mind how do the condo look okay this is what can anyone guess this is the another bird which was said over there what was the name of that bird rhea so this is rhea and this doesn't have wings only two legs are there and a long neck so that it can hunt it looks like an ostrich isn't it it looks like an ostrich but it is not an ostrich because of some different features different species it's come from that is why its name is ri okay now some more we have seen about the birds now we'll see about some kind of uh, animals also Spider monkey, owl monkey, and squirrel monkey live in the tree of the Amazon forest. See, we see in not only uh, not only these three kinds of monkeys are found in these places, but except these kinds of animals, there are more commonly called animals. You see snake, you see different kinds of reptiles, crocodile, anaconda, hippopotamus, and different kinds of animals are found in this region. but these are some special animals which you will see only in this region not anywhere else so that uh, two uh, birds were those kind which are found only in this places now these monkeys are also found only in this places anaconda python is the largest reptile and it lives in the rainy forest rain forest they are found in the rain forest you see those anaconda movies they are always found deep inside the jungle they definitely don't come to our place but when we go to their place we are not welcomed as a guest we are definitely their prey so they will see they will gobble us so stay away from those anacondas because i know you have seen in those movies also puma and jaguar are large animals of prey which feeds on monkeys and smaller animals you have also seen puma and jaguar they look somewhat like a uh, tiger they belong from their family but due to their body structure 
sorry due to their body structure and due to their uh, skin color they are a little different from like you can say from lion from tiger so their stripes are also different their color are also different from tiger and lion but the similar body structure they have so they are from their family itself puma and jaguar they are the large animal of prey which are found on uh, which feeds on monkey so they how they do they eat food by feeding on those monkeys by feeding on those uh, you can say um, jungle buffaloes so those are also found in this areas you can not in this areas but most of the jungles are having buffaloes jungly pigs and all so they feed on them but if the other kind of animals come in this area which are really poor than this jaguar and puma so they definitely eat them now this is what this is spider monkey and this is owl monkey so a different kind of feature but it matches with monkeys so it's really cute but they are really dangerous because wild animals can't be your friend they are really literally not your friend so you have to stay away from them now lamia and uh, apeka are animals similar to camel as they have long neck llama and apeka alpeka sorry i just misspelled those spellings alpaca are animals similar to camels as they have long neck these are domesticated by the natives inhabitants of for walking now why do they be, means feed this animal it looks like a camel is it the face structure is like a camel but they are feed it they are grown up because of their fur wool they get it we uh, we all already know sheep gives us wool we make wool and clothes from them so therefore their uh, wool is also important okay so that is why they are been grown up and they are grown up as a domestic animal okay so these animals are not found in india definitely not found in india so that is why these are uh, llama and alpaca it look really cute but it's seeing us isn't it so that's two three little uh, alpaca are seeing us okay so they are really different from each other llama is different and alpaca is different llama has a different body structure but lots of fur in them whereas alpaca is also different from them and uh, see you can see their faces and you can understand both are really different colors are also different and face structure is also different this part of the portion of the face are a little similar to the camel so that is why you can say they are the relatives of camel okay so these two animals are only found in south of america okay one this and the second one is this remember their name llama and alpaca okay Galapagos Island are well known for their giant tortoises. There are spiders and insects like tetises flies, which causes sleeping sickness. Tetises, this is a kind of flies which are roaming around this jungle. We definitely see lots of flies moving in the jungle. Have you seen man versus wild? So, but then what is they? That I'm not being asleep because of these mosquitoes, and then he put something those smokes where the mosquitoes just fly away. They don't come near them, is it? So there are some antiseptic things for this, but when this kinds of flies bites you, that is testitis, that will create a sickness of uh, slipping. You will get a slipping sickness means your body will not be that energetic to gain that power to walk so it will take that position of sleeping and resting your body so that is why it happens when any insect kinds of thing bites take an example of a spider which bites so spider after biting you will also feel a little bit kind of sickness sleeping sickness but you shouldn't sleep in that moment because it is really dangerous whether those uh venom can just uh, totally get in your body and destroy your systems so it is really very dangerous at that moment of sleeping especially sleeping 
Now, these are kinds of uh, insects, but this Galapagos have a biggest giant tortoise in this area. I think you should go and look for this tortoise. Amazon River has varieties of fishes such as stingray. We have seen stingray. It has a huge kind of body and there are strings in them. Electric fish, piranha. Piranha is the most dangerous fish in this world. I may tell you because of their teeth. They have long sharp teeth which once goes in your body, they won't leave. They will eat that flesh out of your body. So I have also seen lots of things regarding this, lots of news regarding Firana where they get stuck in one person and they don't leave it. They eat whole of their body. If one piranha attacks, then it is normal. But 500 to 1000 piranha attacks, then it is really very dangerous for a human being to survive. So that is really important so that we can be safe from this piranha. Just stay away from them. I think there is a movie also, piranha. You should watch it. That is really dangerous coming near, coming closer to piranha. River also have crocodile. So these places have huge, dangerous reptiles in them and also fishes. Stingray, electric fish, touch it, you will get that electric shock, isn't it? Piranha, the most dangerous fish, and then crocodiles. I hate crocodiles. They are really very dangerous. Agriculture and animal husbandry, cultivable land in South America is limited barely. Uh, 10% of its area is under cultivation. Now, if you take the whole places of South America, only 10% of the area is for agriculture purpose. See, if you take out the rest of the places where people stays, if you take out the rest of the places where forests are there, including rivers and everything, the whole South America is having only 10% of the area which can be cultivated. Rest of the places can be cultivated, but the government doesn't allow them to cut the trees for the Amazon forest. Okay. The main region of cultivation are the pas, uh, Pampas, sorry, Pampas in Argentina and Uruguay parts of Brazilian highlands and east coast and central Chile. So these are the places where you will find cultivations are happen. And agriculture cultivations take places. But what are these places? Argentina, Brazil, and east coast of central Chile. Okay, east and west coast of central Chile. You can find these places where cultivation mainly occurs. I said you about the grassland. Remember Pampas, Uruguay, and these highlands which are having really huge amount of grasses. Over there you can go for cultivation. Uh, agriculture okay most important crops of south america are maize wheat rice coffee cotton sugarcane and etc so remember these uh one two three four five six six important crops which have grown in this area okay now can you tell me what is this crop name because i know you eat this uh, grains not raw but yes you boil it or you just smash it and eat it you uh, you have to make it in a mixture form and then you eat all these things isn't it or you cannot chew it raw it's really dangerous for your stomach itself so these six main crops are grown in this region including sugarcane coconut coffee uh, rice, wheat, maize. See, coffee is not a crop. It's a plant. Okay. Cotton is also a plant. Sugarcane is also a plant. Including maize, wheat and rice. These are crops. Maize is a native crop of South America. And it is the chef food crop. Chef food crop. Okay. In the warm tropical region, wheat is grown in the cooler Temperature region in Argentina and Chile. So, uh, Chile, this place, uh, Argentina and Chile, this place, you can find weeds growing in this area because it needs cooler climate to grow. So, this is the places where you can find growing wheat. Wheat is also exported from Argentina. Potato is widely grown in the Andes region. 
rice is cultivated all along the Brazilian coast. So these places are really famous for what? Those Andes mountains, you can find potato growing in that region. Why? Because of lots of rain, lots of soil cultivation goes over there due to climatic changes also water and everything is important for so, uh, that potato to grow you get in this place that is why potato is grown in this place isn't it wheat is also exported from argentina okay i already said it uh, brazil is called coffee pot of the world coffee is derived from cafa cafa uh, uh, Fresenda. Fresenda is the largest coffee estate Fazenda, thousands of coffee, coffee plantation in Brazil. Ready Janeiro is called coffee pot of the world. Rio de Janeiro. This is a place. Rio de Janeiro is called coffee pot of the world. Now, we know that coffee is grown in this place. Which is the place? Fazenda is a large coffee estate where coffee comes and from there it exports from rest of the world also. Okay, so that place is called coffee pot of the world. Now, among non-food crops, South America is an important produ producer of coffee and cocoa. Brazil is the world's largest producer of coffee coffee now i don't have to explain this because you know brazil is having the huge amount of coffee that is why it can export their coffee to other places also feeding their own nation own district own country then whatever the less leftover things they export it in the other places colombia and ecuador are the all are also important producer of coffee cocoa is also produced on a large scale in the coastal region of brazil colombia and ecuador are the other producer of cocoa understood i don't have to explain this because it was really easy colombia and ecuador they all have the supply of coffee in that region Coco, uh, cotton is grown in drier slopes of Andes and is exported to the other countries. South America is an important producer of sugar cane in the tropical lowlands. Understood this part? Because of the slopes, you can find cotton growing in this region where you can see soil which are being given those nutrition to the coconut plant for growing. Coconut plant needs huge amount of water for growing and that is a place, good place for cotton. Sorry, I'm saying coconut. It will be cotton. Cotton needs lots of water for growing in that region. Even coconut also. But we are talking about cotton. Now, why it is important? Because water is really needed for cotton to grow and that place is having huge amount of water because of the slopes rain happens and they the cotton gets water from there brazil is the leading producer of sugarcane yes brazil is the leading producer of sugarcane and it is second largest producer in the world don't forget this second largest producer of what sugarcane in the whole world other sugarcane producing countries are argentina peru guyana and colombia understood Argentina was once the biggest exporter of beef in the world. So it was exporting beef in all over the world. It was the was the biggest exporter itself. It can export lots of beef to the entire world. The biggest, the best fishing ground are located in the coast of Pacific Ocean. In the coast of Pacific Ocean, you will find lots of fishes are being trapped in their net. That is the best fishing port. Chile catches is almost the same as the Canada's, but mostly it should uh, it is used for industrial purpose and not for food. Now that place Chile is the central place that uh, has most wildly environment like Canada, but those waters are that places is really used for what industrial purpose. River water we get in that place. A uh, good amount of rainfall and good amount of climate we get in that place and those places, the chilly places is really important for industrial purpose. 
like Titicaca and River Amazon are important places for fresh water fishing. Understood? Now these rivers are really important and why for? For the cultivation and moving to far for the human civilization. These rivers are really important. Population, we'll talk about something about population. The inhabitation of South America belong to mixed racial groups, Amazon Indians and Inca Indians are natives of South America, who settled before the arrivals of European. See what happened when the European came. Before that, they found that Amazon Indians, which used to stay in the jungle, tribal peoples, you call them, those were Amazon Indians and Inca Indians. They were already civilized. They have occupied that place. Those are called tribals. So before when? Before the European came. European came in search of gold. Later settled here. So we all know how this began. European came, they look for gold, they didn't get, but they got lots of food, fishes to survive in that area and they got it. And then they cultivated lots of crops, trees, vegetables, etc. So these are the tribals which were found in that area, which really get it in that area, tribal peoples, which stays where? Behind, besides the area where tribal stays, Amazon River. These are the some places where they stay. These are the tribal peoples, okay? Now, Salvasa, uh, sorry, slaves were brought from Africa to work in plantation. The intermarriage among this group formed mixed races. Now, intermarriage caste, you know about this. Slaves were brought from Africa. Africa slaves were brought to work in that country to grow more cultivation, to bring more uh, profit to the country, okay? So they brought Africa. See, uh, you can say some poor people come from different places and work in that places so that uh, they can earn something. But due to those work, the company earns profit. So this is the thing which goes on in the entire world. South America registers as much as highest percentage of urbanization other than other country uh, sorry than any other country in the world so 47 average the highest urban population is in Uruguay, 93 percent and the lowest in guyana 36 percent so south america registers a much higher percentage of urbanization developed countries you will find that is 80 percent some are below tribes some are really the tribal peoples are also counted over there some village peoples are also counted over there and the urbanization are also counted over there so in total you will find different kinds of civilization works in this area okay you have to note this down because this is really important South America registered birth rates similar to the world's 21 by 1000 average, but the death rate is 6 by 1000 is less than the world's average. Means over here birth take place in a huge way, but as compared to the death, see both should be similar. Why? To control the population of the earth. But in South America, birth are really high then death rate has become low, okay? Therefore, the rate of natural increase of population in South America is higher than the world's average population. So you will find over here that the birth uh, rates have increased, death rates have decreased and the population have increased. This is only the reason of having huge population in that area. Now you understood everything about population, vegetation, crops grown in that area, climate because of the things. So it took three sessions for completing in this classes. I think this last class is literally a little long. That is why I've explained you everything in a hurry way, not in a hurry way because we believe in quality education. I have shown you all the important topics. I don't want to hurry up and complete the chapter because why because this child come uh, with child learning believes in what quality education this child's learning believes in quality education and we are the teachers who provide quality education all the important topics i have mentioned in this uh, class so this class might be a little boring but 
you have come to know different varieties of things which we find in south america which is called the land of andes because of the andes mountain i hope you have liked my classes and still you bring lots of love for me if you feel so please hit that like button and increase my enthusiasm in teaching you more about it now subscribe vistas learning and keep watching vistas videos uh, youtube shorts we are also there for all the chapters we hope you a very good health and keep learning from vistas learning till then what i said is take care and bye